Uh, this afternoon, we're joined by Karen Gill, MBE, um, co-founder of Every Woman. Um, she runs a fantastic business um, worldwide, um, which I'm going to read out um, something here that I uh, pinched off your website just uh, to explain it um, to everybody else. Every Woman is the expert in the advancement of women in business with a presence in over 100 countries and a successful active network of over 20,000 members. Every Woman is recognised globally as the professional organisation that dr drives the development of women at all levels. Now, I've done a bit of research, Karen. Uh, I think your business is amazing. And my, what you. I surmise from it, oh, well, I'll let you say more, is that you develop, you support you inspire and you recognize women in business. So I'll jump yes. in by asking you why you started your business in the first place. Okay, um, right. Well, that, that's a, that could be a very long answer to that question. So I'll, I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Um, so yes, which was back in 1999. So we've been around nearly 18 years. And I had had a quite a long and fantastic career in the hospitality industry. And I'd, um, you know, risen through the ranks of a fantastic hotel chain that really um, developed and supported and looked after its people, which is why I had such a good career there. Um, and my co-founder, Maxine, had had a great career in the film industry. We actually met in, in Australia when we were both backpacking around the world. And um, in our very early 20s, she went off to New York, as I said, worked in the film industry. I worked, got into the hotel industry in Australia and came back to the UK. Um, and then I did, which a lot of girls do, had my son, and uh, so who's 18 now. And I suddenly just realized that this was going to be a very difficult thing for me to balance, to be able, you know, in the hospitality industry, I looked after the territory, Europe. Middle East and Africa so I lived on a plane it was a fantastic and very rewarding career but I just knew this was going to be very difficult and and also it was a choice I didn't want I so I started a family actually I want to spend some time um, at home now and so I thought actually it's time for me to do something different and what would be great would be to start my own little enterprise um, and Maxine who'd been living abroad now for 18 years 10 years in Australia and eight years in New York was coming back to the UK and we thought it'd be real fun to start a business together. So we set about to start a, um, a film production company and of course we knew, knew nothing about that. Well, she had a bit of experience in um, film casting, um, but we didn't have any contacts. We didn't have, that wasn't, you know, the background, our background or our skill set. And so we found it very challenging. So failed at it miserably. Um, but at the same time, we um, uh, were meeting lots of other women that were in the same sort of position. You know, they were having their families. And I think, you know, what's interesting today is that the average age of a woman having her first child is about 31. And that has significantly changed over the last 20 years, 20 yeah. to, you know, 30 to 20 years. And, um, and so that means that when women are kind of stepping back to raise their raise their children and have families they are you know they've had a career they've had a job they've been in the workplace they've got a skill set and uh, then and they know that they can still con con contribute so we were meeting lots of women like us and they were telling us um, in sometimes dreadful stories about how they were being um, sort of put off by um, going into business and not supported, that they found that the business services sector, so accountants, banks, telcos, all those type of companies really didn't understand their motivations for wanting to start a business and were feeling very unsupported. So we thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to um, give, create a community of female entrepreneurs and give them a better voice and give uh, and 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 really get the business community to understand uh, that their needs are a little bit different. So that was the original reason that we set up Every Woman. Um, and at the time, if you can, if you remember back then, 1990, for those of you that um, you know were, were around, you know it really was just the advent of the internet. And uh, so our original concept was to do this sort of in the physical world and create li little local communities. And it was a, a, a friend who was really embracing technology said, you should set up a community, a virtual community on, online. And so we set about doing that in our spare bedroom with a dial up modem and, um, and sort of, as they say, the rest is history. Uh, obviously there's been a very, very long road over the um, past 18 years, but our passion, although we are now essentially uh, an organization that supports 
uh, women to advance themselves, whether that's that, you know, as a entrepreneur or as a woman who is trying to progress and develop her career. Um, you know, at our core, our legacy is we're very passionate about women that are, that, that are in enterprise because it's challenging. Karen, what do you most enjoy about being self-employed? Um, well, I mean, we're, we're sort of a little bit more than self-employed now because we employ it. We actually have a staff of tw full-time staff of 20. We've got lovely offices in Waterloo in London. We uh, contract a lot of freelancers, associates, we have a lot of associates. Um, so uh, what I enjoy most about um, being in, you know, in enterprise is that you are sort of the master of your own destiny, so to speak, um, and the people that you meet. There are obviously huge amounts of challenges that go with it, but I think that you meet other people that are very um, um, entrepreneurial of spirit, that are very supportive, that have done amazing things. I mean, you know, we run an awards program, which actually is in its 15th year, which showcases the amazing businesses that women have started and grown. And many of those, as you said, from a bedroom or from a kitchen top into multi-million pound enterprises and their journeys and the challenges and the obstacles they have overcome are quite over, you know, unbelievable. And so, and it's a real privilege to meet those people. They give you constantly daily inspiration, really, to push yourself just a little bit further. What struggles have you faced since being in business? I think the, I think the biggest struggles that we face are that, um, you know, a lot of the time we're dealing with clients that are in the corporate sector and there is a very different, um, uh, you know, having worked in a big business versus a small business, there are very different parameters of how you can operate. Yeah. And I always, um, you know, use the analogy that when you work in a big bis business, it's like being on a very, very big cruise liner. And if you need to suddenly change course, that's a huge operation. You know, it entails a huge operation, a huge number of people and, you know, takes time to get to, to, to revert the course. Whereas if you're, you're a little business, you're like in a little yacht and you can just tack yourself <laughs> into another direction. And so I think some of the challenges that we face is that we are sometimes at the mercy of um, people that can't move very fast. And, and so that can sometimes really have an effect on your business because you think something's going to happen, it doesn't, and it gets stalled and, and you spend a lot of time on that when you maybe could have spent it on other things. Um, and, then the, and then the other things that are, you know, it's like everything in life, isn't it? It's, it, it every upside has the, has the other side to it. And, and that's around people. Um, you know, it's very challenging employing people today in a small business because, you know, lots of the bigger businesses have um, bigger pack packages to attract talent. Um, so you have to be very, um, you know, have to, that's why we're having a big party here this afternoon. You've got to be very creative about how you can attract and really talented people. Yeah, no, definitely. And for people, Karen, who are thinking of maybe setting up their own business and they're not quite sure about it do you have any advice to give those people well i think the one thing i think the great thing today versus you know when we started is that there is so much advice and information available today you know all of the um the banks and we were we've worked in partnership with um, natwest for many years they have a real desire to help small enterprises today which is i think quite different and therefore they have a lot of tools you know they can really help you with determining if you're on the right track from a market perspective um you know really supporting you with your thinking um, and so it's about using using your network as much as possible, thinking about the people that can help you, um, really doing your research, which is so easy to do online. Um, and then I think it's just once you commit and you go for it, it's just focus on it to make it, you know, to, to, to get it right and to make it success, successful. So what kind of people are you looking to attract to your business and maybe you could just give us an, an overview a bit more about about your business as it's well our our vision statement is every woman everywhere so at what we, we you know after 18 years we now have you know 23,000 people on our e-learning platform across 90 100 countries i think and our original vision you know max and i we just 
when we were looking at the landscape for women in business, we thought, you know, actually what we really need is for women to be much more connected and supportive of each other mm -hmm. and for us to have a stronger voice in the business community. And as I said, we tried to set about doing that with very, um, you know, clunky technology. Whereas, so we are able now to really start living that vision because you know online communities and technology can enable that so it's fantastic when we get a couple of hundred women on a webinar and some of them are in Ghana some of them are in New York some of them are in New Zealand and you can feel that actually they're really getting something excuse me a minute <coughs> they're really getting something out of out of hearing other people from other parts of the world and 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 it, and it says to them I'm not alone in my thinking you know um so we are about helping you know any woman who who just wants a bit more support and 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 and, and that might be because she's stuck in her career it might be because she's starting an enterprise or it might be because she's at the tail end of her career so really we would like to think there is something at every woman for everyone and then we work closely with large organizations that are really looking at how they can really retain and develop their female talent so that we can get more women into senior positions. Nice to talk to you, Sarah. You too, Karen.